Hey LA classes, it's Mr. Hayes checking in on Thursday, May 21st with today's video. At this point in our movie review process, we should have around five paragraphs completed. Not long paragraphs, but there should be five or more. Those five paragraphs should be number one, your intro paragraph with your hook that establishes the main points of your movie review. Number two, the summary paragraph where you summarize the plot some of the main characters, the setting, and the, and the conflict of your film. And then three, four, and five are your three body paragraphs, which have your reasons and evidence of why you either liked or disliked the movie. So at this point, on Thursday, May 21st, you should have those paragraphs completed in your movie review document. And I reached out to a number of you yesterday if you're falling behind to see if you need help. So today's checklist is below. We are going to talk counterclaim today, which is something you may be familiar with from other subjects. After you watch this video, you will write your counterclaim paragraph in your movie review. So one paragraph to add today. No live sessions today. I am part of an interview team uh, for a hiring at the school. So while I will be responding to your emails, maybe not right away, but when we have our breaks in the interview process, I will not have the optional sessions in the afternoon or day. And then here's our week at a glance. Originally, today was going to be figurative language and tomorrow counterclaim. We decided as an ELA team to switch those. It just made more sense. That's why there's a slight change there. As we move along in the module, you'll see that today's teaching point is that critics stay fair to an opposing viewpoint by acknowledging it, considering it, and responding to it. That's the essence of a counterclaim that we'll talk about more in a bit as we go through the slides. This mini lesson video will be posted right here when I'm finished. And then, of course, the application activity is next. So there's the link, and I will uh, attach those links in a second to your counterclaim paragraph. It will just take you to that same movie review you've been working on all week long. A link to today's slides, and then a link to uh, my Dead Poet Society exemplar. What I'm also going to do is add a link to the um, uh, Romeo and Juliet exemplar as well that I've also had on my previous modules because I wanted to do as many possible examples uh, to help you along the writing process. But this link is brand new, where I've taken all the paragraphs from my slides that I've worked on with you and talked through and just put them all together into paragraph form like your movie review. So you can see I color-coded it with my hook intro summary, my two body paragraphs, you should have three, and then the counterclaim, which we'll talk about today. And you can see as I go down here, I've made them all uh, color-coded so you can see all the parts come together. Okay? So that's another resource for you, but the big resource today is the slide. So let's go to today's slideshow. I'm going to start with slide number one. So the schedule, uh, just like on the module, is here along with today's video and the teaching point, which I've already read. So let's keep going. So what is the counterclaim? Again, you may be familiar with this term from science or social studies, but this is where you acknowledge the other side of the argument. So here's kind of the process. If your movie review is overwhelmingly positive or negative, you're going to acknowledge one aspect of the other side. So if you love this movie that you're reviewing, you're going to point out one flaw with it in the counterclaim. If you despise the movie that you're reviewing, you're going to point out, now here's one little bright spot with it. Just acknowledge the other side. I'll talk about the purpose of that in a second. I would say the overwhelming majority of you have either firmly positive or firmly negative movie reviews, but if your review is more mixed, take one of your reasons that you have established in your body paragraphs and point out the other side of it. So for example, if one of your body paragraphs is about a really strong actor in the movie, maybe you say in your counterclaim, hey, here's an actor that's not so strong or an actress that's not so strong, okay? So if your review is more mixed, take one of those reasons and point out the flip side. Why do we do counterclaims? What's the point? What's the point of almost arguing with yourself? It doesn't just take away from the point of the argument and the movie review. Well, not really, because addressing counterclaims allows you to do certain things. Number one, it establishes ethos, which is credibility. We talked about that last Friday as part of the ethos, pathos, logos lesson. To show your audience who have examined both sides of the debate, if you can prove that to your reader, your reader now knows that you've thought this through. This isn't an opinion you pull out of thin air, but you've really considered all sides of uh, the commentary of this movie. You've gone, you've gone in with an open mind. It also, number two, allows you to find a common ground with your readers. 
So if you're reviewing Black Panther and it's really negative, but the person who's reading the review likes Black Panther, instead of them just putting it down and throwing it away and saying, this writer doesn't know what they're talking about, they still might give you a chance and read it because you are pointing out one aspect of their side of the argument, so to speak. It can also be an avenue to respond to possible criticism of your claim and evidence. So in a way, by acknowledging the other side, you're kind of getting out ahead of that criticism that could come your way from someone who thinks differently about the movie. So here are the three uh, points, the three main sections, you could say, of a good counterclaim paragraph. They follow, a good counterclaim paragraph follows this process. First, you acknowledge, you state what the counterclaim is. You state that other side of the argument. If it's a positive review, here's where you first state, okay, here's something that I didn't like about it. Then you consider it deeper. So once you've acknowledged that thing that you didn't like about it, you maybe elaborate a bit on that with one or two more sentences. This is like your evidence or example for your counterclaim statement. So if your acknowledge is, I really hated the um, antagonist, I thought that he was a weak villain, the consider is one or two sentences of possible scenes or moments or lines, examples of why that was such a weak villain. And then the last part is you respond. You're almost arguing with yourself in a way. You respond to that counterclaim. So if I say, this is a weak villain and here's why, you might say, but nevertheless, it still does not take away from the overwhelming amount of positive characters, overwhelming enough overwhelming amount of incredibly active performances and the great dialogue and script as the reason why I love this movie so much. So while you are acknowledging this counterclaim and pointing out the other side of the argument, you're going to quickly respond to it and say, yeah, but this counterclaim isn't as important as all the positive things I've already said throughout my review. So let's keep going with an example here so you can see how these three parts come to life. To help you do that, to help you write your paragraph, I've included these sentence stems that we've used in years past that might help you. On the left side are sentence stems that will help start your counterclaim paragraph. So this is how you begin acknowledging the other side of the argument. There's five, uh, six possibilities there. And then when you get to the respond part, which is the last part of your counterclaim paragraph, you can use one of these sentence stems to help you take it back to your side of the argument. So. For example, you might say, if I use the first one here, on the other hand, one might say that the villain of, I'll just use Black Panther as an example, uh, the villain of Killmonger was not very convincing, and, I, and the viewer disagrees strongly with his worldview. Then you might say one or two scenes, as you consider, you might say one or two scenes where Killmonger just did not stand out on the screen compared to um, Chadwick Boseman's Black Panther character. But to finish your counterclaim, you might use one of these. However, the disappointing character of Killmonger did not take away from the amazing spectacle of the movie Black Panther and the other characters that stood out on the screen. So I'm going to do this with Dead Poet Society to finish off my lesson here. So in my planner from last week, you can see that I mapped out my counterclaim, which I hope that some of you, if not all of you, did already. If not, if you didn't quite know what to do there, you can still think of one today. So I've got my counterclaim idea from the movie. The scenes where Knox was pursuing a love interest only acted to distract from the real story, and it felt forced. Remember, I love Dead Poet Society. I've just spent my whole review talking about how great it is. So my counterclaim is naturally going to be a nitpick I had with it, something I felt was a flaw, and that was the storyline with Knox. Then I gave two examples of why I felt that way. Example one was he just wasn't developed enough as a character. There was no reason for me to care about him as a viewer like I cared about Neo and cared about Todd and Mr. Keating. And secondly, the scene when he got into a fight at the party with a football player who was dating the girl of his dreams, it was just so cliche. I've seen directors and novelists use that storyline so many times of the fist fight between the bully football player and the sensitive kid of, over a girl. It's cliche. I didn't feel like the director was very innovative with that scene. It wasn't very well planned, scripted, and executed. And so those are the two things I'm going to use within my paragraph to, to kind of in more depth acknowledge my counterclaim. So you can see here I color-coded those three aspects of a good counterclaim. Acknowledge, consider, respond. I'm going to start by acknowledging what the counterclaim is. 
and I use one of those sentence stems from the previous slide to do so. I will admit that the entire Knox Overstreet storyline was completely unnecessary. All it did was cause me to yell at the TV to get back to Keaton's class or scream, wait, what about Neil and his father? So right there, there's my sentence of pointing out what the counterclaim is. I'm acknowledging one bad thing about the movie. Then I'm going to consider it deeper. For one, they simply did not develop Knox's character to the point where a viewer would care about some silly crush. The low point was the cliché fight scene at the frat party. Because, of course, the pretty blonde is dating the star football player. It is disappointing that Weir, who's the director, would settle for such an overused plot device. You can see that yellow there, the consider comes directly from my planner examples. But now I'm going to almost argue with myself in the respond part. This is where I get back to saying, yeah, the counterclaim was a flaw, but it didn't take away from the fact this was a great movie. Nevertheless, this, and I use another sentence stem from the previous slide, nevertheless, this brief 15 minutes of apathy does not take away, apathy meaning I don't care about this as a viewer, doesn't take away from the brilliance of seeing Knox and his friends grow throughout the movie with the help of Mr. Keating's guidance. So I'm saying that, yeah, see, I'm developing ethos and credibility by acknowledging the other side of my argument, but it doesn't take away from the fact this movie is still great. It doesn't ruin or spoil the movie. Okay? So the counterclaim is all about establishing credibility with the reader. It's about acknowledging the other side in some depth. Um, and presenting a different way of thinking to someone who picks up immediately. So it's very important. That is all for today's work. I will attach this slideshow to my, the module as well. And the exit ticket will just be showing that you've worked a little bit on your counterpoint today in your Google Doc. If you have any questions, again, email me today because I'm on the interview committee. Tomorrow is a half day. So once again, no um, optional sessions. But of course, I check my email all the time. So if you're struggling with any of this, I'd be happy to take a look at your review and help you along the way. Okay, everyone have a good Thursday. Talk soon.